Hi, my name is Nicole Franklin. I'm one of your pre-arrival advisors of International Student and Scholar Advising at Penn State Global. Let's walk through the navigation of iStart and the new student visa documentation process. Welcome. This video is to share with you how to navigate iStart and specifically the new student visa documentation process. When you receive an instructional email from international at psu.edu, you will then be granted access to iStart. We ask that you not click in the login area because we don't believe you have an active PSU email yet. Instead, you will always have access to limited services access and click on that button. Here you will need to enter your nine digit Penn State ID number. It will start with a number nine. Today I am using a temporary ID as part of the test because I am not an international student and I cannot use my personal nine digit ID number. You will type your date of birth as day, uh, month, then day, then year, and the limited services PIN. If you do not yet know your limited services PIN, you can click on the link at the bottom of the screen and have it emailed to your non-Penn State email. Your PIN will not change, so be sure to save it for the next time you need to log into iStart. Once you log into iStart, you will see your name at the top right corner, the menu on the left side, any notifications or emails that you have received from our office, and then down at the bottom is the current request, new student visa documentation process, also listing your campus of admission and your major or your program of study as well. Even though it looks like this request is submitted, go ahead and click on it. iStart does require some patience as we move between the screens. The first thing you should see on the new student visa documentation process is your immigration documentation. We ask all new international students to complete this process below, even if you do not require an I-20 or a DS-2019 for visa application. So each of these different tabs is called an e-form or electronic form. Sections can be collapsible and can be opened. You can always navigate to different sections of the menu. And here we have a set of instructions for the new student visa documentation process. You can also register for a question and answer session with pre-arrival advising if you need some additional help. And you can always return to your home page by clicking the home button at the top left corner. In the new student visa documentation process, there are several different e-forms that are required, and then there are some which are optional. Let's start with the non-US address form. Once you enter the form, you'll find some information that is pre-populated. This data comes from the application address that you entered when you applied to the university. This information can be corrected and changed as needed. Don't forget to add your personal email address. And we want to know if you require a DS-2019, can we use the above address for shipping? If not, you can always add another address here. After you submit the non-US address, you can always add another if you made an error or need to add additional information. 
let's move on to the biographical information form. So the surname or last name will appear on your passport, typically labeled as such. Your given names will appear after the surname, and we ask that you add all of your names and initials that appear on your passport. Don't forget to add your passport country as well, and the expiration date in month, day, year format. Remember, the data I'm adding here is strictly for a sample, so it's probably not accurate for my personal information. As you can see, once you submit the non-US address form, the information will also appear in the form itself. You can always add another if the information is not correct. It is possible to also cancel this form and start all over. Please continue to submit all of the required forms. And as you can see, once forms are submitted, they will appear with a green mark. Let's go over the financial guarantee form. The very first question is required. Do you need Penn State to issue you an I-20 or DS-2019? We're curious as to why not. Most students will choose yes. Please complete the questions below as they pertain to you. As you can see, until you submit the form, it is okay to check the answers and see what happens if you click yes or no. For this form, you are required to submit proof of funds and proof of ongoing future support as well, depending on who will be your sponsor. The proof of ongoing support will come from either a non-U.S. citizen or a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. The difference with this part of the form is that non-U.S. citizens are asked to complete a signed letter of support, whereas U.S. citizens or permanent residents are required to submit an I-134 affidavit of support, which is a government document. Once you select your PDF files from your computer and upload everything, you must submit this form and then the only other required form is the Submit for Review at the bottom of the home page. Let's go back home and take a look. Once you have submitted the four required e-forms in immigration documentation, please review the optional forms to make sure that none of those apply to you. Once you submit the four required e-forms, the most important is Submit for Review. Let's look at the Submit for Review e-form. This form will put your record in queue for review by a pre-arrival advisor. During peak processing time, it could take up to two weeks for us to reach your file in the order that it was submitted. So please be sure to complete the iStart process as soon as you're able. If you are coming to complete a graduate degree program at Penn State, please be sure you enter your department contact's name and the email address for the primary department contact. We will want to ask that person some information specifically about the length of your program and any financial award that you may have received. 
There's a few check boxes here that you should read carefully for insurance information and to certify that all the information is correct. Now you're ready to submit the form for pre-arrival review. After you've submitted all of the required e-forms in iStart, you can check again by re-entering the iStart New Student Visa Documentation process and navigating back to the immigration documentation. Our office will follow up with an email for any additional information that we require. Sometimes if a form is denied, it's because it simply did not seem to apply to your situation. Other forms will ask for follow-up. Again, we'll email you with additional information if requested. You can always go back and add a new e-form at any time throughout the process to make a correction to something that we asked you about. Congratulations! Your immigration documentation is now approved as indicated by the Submit for Review eForm. After you receive your I-20 or DS-2019, the next time you log into iStart, you'll be moving forward to the section called Before You Arrive. Let's explore this section next. We ask that you complete three forms prior to your arrival to campus. You can get started with the very first one as soon as you receive your I-20 or DS-2019. We ask that you sign the document and scan a PDF of your signature on the document and upload that to your record so we have a copy of it. Once you receive your F-1 or J-1 visa, again, we ask you to return to iStart to the new student visa documentation process and upload a scanned copy of your F or J visa. The government regulation training is for your benefit. In the government regulation training, you will be asked to enter either the F regulations or the J regulations and click through a little video and take a quiz. We ask for you to upload the government regulation training certificate here. This training is best done while you are in your home country instead of a computer lab during orientation. It's your responsibility to understand the regulations surrounding your visa, so these are very important for you to learn about. You're still not quite complete with the new student visa documentation process. After you arrive to your campus, there's still three more required forms to complete in the iStart new student section. We ask for you to provide a copy of your I-94 arrival record. The I-94 cannot be completed until after you enter the United States. There are good instructions here for how to enter the Custom Border Protection website and how to retrieve your electronic arrival record. If you're a SEVIS transfer student, we ask that you do this after you arrive to campus just in case there's travel during the summer while you're on holiday and between schools. You are requested to upload your most current I-94 and the upload of the travel history is recommended. There's help available if you cannot locate your I-94. You only need to ask for assistance. We do recommend that when you are retrieving the I-94 from the CBP website, you should type your name as it appears on your F or J visa. Don't forget, you'll have to submit three e-forms in order for your immigration check-in to be considered complete. The I-94 record information, the personal information in account management, and then the submit immigration check-in. If you haven't submitted your I-94, or your F1J1 visa, those two forms are required before your immigration check-in can be approved. 
We will email you if there are any issues with your documents or your e-forms for additional follow-up. This will conclude your new student visa documentation process. Once your CVIS record is activated and you are a currently enrolled student, additional menu options will be open to you. Remember, iStart is your portal for any immigration requests that you have during your time here. Anytime you need to make a change to your I-20 or DS-2019, or even if you have a quick question for an international student advisor, iStart is your portal for connecting with international student and scholar advising. Don't forget, you will need a travel endorsement signature on your I-20 or DS-2019 before you re-enter the United States the next time. I hope this has been a helpful video for you. Navigating iStart is not difficult. It just takes some time to learn this new system.